Hello, welcome back. My name is Evan Brand, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner and Podcast Host of Not Just Paleo. Now today we're talking about IBS and dysbiosis. This is something that is so common and something that I struggled with personally that led me to get into this health space in the first place. So many people ask, what happened? Why? How did you get involved? Well, usually a lot of people, including myself, were wounded warriors. And so something happened to us that led us into this space. And that was IBS for me. So I remember being in the bathroom at school and college, just sort of holding my stomach in super bad pain. And I was unable to function sometimes. I had to always look, where's the nearest bathroom? And that's not a fun feeling to do, but there's some easy to address underlying causes that can help you fix this. So the conventional medical model, if you go to them and you have IBS, you have severe stomach pain, they're gonna think that you either have appendicitis or they're gonna think typically that you have a stomach ulcer. And so what they'll do is they'll make you drink barium, which is essentially a disgusting chalky drink, and then they're going to lay you down on an x-ray machine, and they're going to look in a little bit deeper and see if you have an ulcer. And if you don't, well, then here's an acid blocker anyway. Here's an antispasmatic drug to reduce that spastic firing of the colon that tends to give people diarrhea, if we're talking about IBS diarrhea dominant or they're gonna give you sometimes an antidepressant because the effect on the serotonin receptor in the brain tends to modulate the colon transit time of your stool. None of those options are great options and I denied all three of those when I got recommended them by a mainstream doctor. So here we go, number one, food intolerances. So this is gonna be your gluten, this is gonna be your wheats, sometimes this is gonna be corn, barley, sometimes even rice and all of your other non-gluten containing grains. Grains just tend to be a little bit inflammatory for certain people. Some people can handle them. Now that my gut's healed, I'm able to do organic white rice with not many problems. Now you have to cut these food intolerances out. If you have general, maybe you have some pain, maybe you have some cramping, some bloating, some gas, some burping, things like that. The first step is gonna be to remove these potentially inflammatory foods. So myself, I was in the bodybuilding world at the time and I was eating lots of complex carbs, right? The brown rice pasta because I thought that's what you had to eat to build muscle and that's completely false. So food intolerances, you have to remove those. Let's move right along to number two, which is inflammation and or chronic stress. So we do know if you have the tight junctions here, so these, this is the tight junctions in your gut, and we do know that cortisol is going to break apart those tight junctions. So what you can do is, if you take your fingers here, this is your gut, this is the tight junctions that you have, and now you're going to separate those a little bit. Now food toxins and other undigested food particles are gonna be able to get through these tight junctions in your gut and cause a condition called leaky gut. And this is gonna contribute due to inflammation. So if you have a imbalance of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids, for example, you're not eating lots of good, wild-caught, safe, clean, non-heavy metal toxic fish, If you're not doing that, you're going to have some inflammation that's going on, most likely. So if you're not taking a good high quality, non-rancid fish oil supplement, that's another uh, cause that could be uh, linking to this inflammation, linking to this chronic stress. So we do know that cortisol is gonna tear apart those tight junctions in the gut and cause leaky gut, which takes us on to number three. And bad flora is gonna be included in that as well. That's sort of this whole dysbiosis picture. This is just a very general term for an overgrowth of bad guys or not enough good guys in the gut. So you have probiotics all throughout your body. You have them in your mouth, which is a reason you shouldn't do mouthwash, antibacterial mouthwash. It kills all the good guys in in the mouth. You have probiotics on your skin, and then you have probiotics from your mouth to your anus, your whole GI tract. So there's different types of strains throughout. And what happens with dysbiosis in this leaky gut condition is that sometimes we'll get something called SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth where right down here at the bottom of the stomach emptying into the small intestine will have an overgrowth of bacteria there. Now, the small intestine typically is not gonna be completely devoid of flora, but it does have significantly less bacteria than your colon does, your large intestine. And so that's why when you do have some of these bad flora, leaky gut, inflammation, chronic stress, food tolerances, 
All this stuff, this is all going to add up and cause a cascade of symptoms, which is why you could have alternating constipation, diarrhea, gas, et cetera, et cetera. So we really do have to address this bad flora, this leaky gut condition. We gotta knock out the cortisol, so getting an adrenal test run to see what your rhythm is. If you have high cortisol all the time, that's gonna be contributing to that leaky gut. There's a test that we can run called intestinal permeability. I'll sometimes run that on my patients, but often, Nine out of 10 people have some type of leaky gut going on anyway, so it's honestly just a waste of money for a lot of people because you're gonna spend several hundred dollars just to tell you what I can already confirm just by symptoms, which is that you have some leaky gut going on. And then number four, this is the big one and something that was not on my radar for the longest time until I got into functional medicine, and that's parasites. So there's different ones. So there's blasto, this is blastocystis hominis. Uh, you have entomoeba histolytica, and on and on. There's tons of different parasites that we can identify via stool testing that you can do at home. And if you have those parasites, you're going to have IBS. Now, for example, I had a guy out in California, he's around 50 years old, and he was having diarrhea once a month like clockwork. So a few weeks he would be fine, and then all of a sudden he's got a whole week of diarrhea. And he just thought, oh, well, I must have just ate something bad that week and didn't think anything of it. And this is going on for five, 10, maybe even 15 years in some cases. And so what we do is we do a stool test on him, and we find out that he has blastocystis hominis. This is a very common one out of three people that I test have blasto and he has this. And so now what we're doing is we're using a natural approach using different herbs and different types of botanicals to kill off this parasite. And then we're going to re-inoculate the gut with some probiotics to fix him. So there has to be an order and there has to be a step-by-step -step process to this whole chaos of IBS and dysbiosis. Something that you can do right now though that you don't need a functional medicine practitioner to do is work on these food intolerances. So if you wanna to stick to something like an AIP, an autoimmune paleo diet, that's very effective. Just using your meat as sort of an accessory and using your vegetables, your bone broth, your glutamine, your healing nutrients for the gut, that's gonna be your number one step. And that's the most impactful thing that I've ever done for myself. And then number two, you know, you definitely want to address the inflammation, balancing out your omega-3 to 6 ratio. You want to balance out that chronic stress, so getting that adrenal test run via saliva, looking at that 24-hour hormone rhythm. And then number three, and if you do find an imbalanced hormone rhythm, aka adrenal dysfunction or adrenal fatigue, you have to have that addressed as well because that's going to keep contributing to this leaky gut. And you can't fix this if you don't fix this stress picture that's causing that in the first place. So addressing the leaky gut, whether it's using slippery elm, marshmallows, some of these other gut healing nutrients, that's something that we often do with patients. And then bad flora here, you have to address that. But here's the deal. If you have something like SIBO, you can't just go in and throw a probiotic into your gut and hope that it's gonna magically fix everything. I can't tell you how many dozens of patients I've had where they're taking a probiotic, they've gone to their naturopath or even a functional medicine practitioner and they just throw them a probiotic as soon as they come into their office and you can't do that because if you have SIBO, for example, you have this bad overgrowth and you throw in probiotics, what you're gonna do is you're actually going to feed it. And I have a female who that happened to her when she went to her naturopath she was taking a probiotic and she kept getting worse and worse. She had stomach distension and she just felt awful. And so we run a test and find out that she has SIBO. She was clear of parasites. So one out of two problems is what we have to work on. And now we're able to add the probiotic in later and re-inoculate the gut and restore that good gut flora. But you can't do that too soon because you're gonna keep contributing to this IBS. And then number four, lastly, parasites. Definitely get an at-home stool test. That's something I can provide. Or if you find a functional medicine practitioner that can do that for you, that's great. You have to identify and just rule out parasites. It's not the cutest and most fun test to do, uh, but if you've been struggling for some time and you wanna get better, this is something that you have to do. And it's just part of the game. And that's ultimately how you can get better. So this is Evan Brand signing out. If you'd like to schedule a free consult with me, talk about your symptoms with your GI system, talk about your goals and if we're a good fit for each other, then you can do that by clicking on screen or you can click below here and I'd love to chat with you at no charge. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.